Hello everyone, today is a new day and there is another video for you all. Today's topic that we are going to do is for the ISC students first. ISC students, you know that your 72 exam is coming and we are preparing for MCQs and the long answer type questions. And yes, although your exam is postponed a bit, but it is there, isn't it? It is, it is not just... Uh, it hasn't vanished yet. So we are going to prepare. We will continue with it as I see you are very much interested in the questions. Um, according to the questions, you start preparing your answers. You will know as many of you are trying to ask me in the comment section that how to write the answers. You will get a detailed idea about how to write them. What are the points? How to write? How to frame the points with an introductory line? Okay, so without any delay, let's move into the questions for today. And yes, if you like it, don't forget to hit the like button and also the bell button beside the subscribe button so that every time you get an update of this video whenever I post it so that you don't miss any and you can immediately prepare for your exams. All right, uh, this is completely free. Your like, uh, hitting the like button is completely free, but it is kind of, you know, an impetus and a happiness to me. So if you benefit, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Let's begin. So model test paper, the tempest, multiple choice questions we will do. We will also solve the long answer type questions. Let's see the first extract. This is part A, which means the multiple choice questions which you will get. Thou and thy meaner fellows, your last service did worthily perform and I must use you in such another trick. Go bring the rabble over whom I give thee power here to this place. Inside them to quick motion, for I must bestow upon the eyes of the young couple some vanity of mine art. It is my promise and they expect it from me. So over here, the first question that comes, you can understand from which extract, which portion is this, where Prospero wants to perform an enter, wants his rabble or the spirits to perform an entertainment show for the, for the, uh, for Miranda and Ferdinand. Question number one. Thou here refers to whom? Ariel, Ferdinand, Miranda and Caliban. Let's move back to the extract. Thou and thy meaner fellows. That means he is talking about the spirits. So thou here refers to whom? Thou here refers to Ariel. So we will be marking Ariel. That is option number A. I hope this much is clear. Next we will move to the next question which is question number 2. Question number two, when was their last service taken by Prospero? In playing pranks with Caliban? No. In laying the banquet? Let us read the other options also. In the shipwreck of Tempest? In the mask party? Yes, it is in the laying of the banquet that their, that their, uh, you know, their performance was required. Coming to question number three, why was the crowd called to this place by Prospero? For music? For dance? To participate in the mask? For illusion created by his magic art? So, of course, crowd was called to this place for what reason? For, not for music, not for dance, but to participate in the mask. So, it is going to be option number C. Extract 2. A telegram for me, Miss, y Miss Yacht, Basil. So, this is extract 2. You know this is from the Miss Meadows, that chapter where you talk about the, the singing lesson, remember? So, question number 1 is, Miss Meadows was astonished to receive the telegram. She thought that Basil had committed suicide, run away, died, made an accident. Committed suicide because he is a very much fickle minded fellow. They thought he must have committed suicide. Question number two, Basil's telegram said what? I am sorry, pay serious attention to my letter, ignore my letter, pay no attention to the letter. So it was pay no attention to the letter or ignore my letter. It is owing to best option is to be Ignore my letter, option number C. Question number three, what has Basil bought? Has Basil bought a new car, hat stand, apartment or bookshelf? This is going to be hat stand. Coming to the part B questions. These portions are very important. Part A is just MCQ type. So you can uh, just uh, go through them at a glance. But part B here, the questions that we are going to discuss is going to be very important. First, we will discuss the uh, B words work. Okay, B. Wordsworth is in V. S. Naipaul's short story, lived in a bubble of illusion. How far is the statement true? In this question, I will read out a theme of the, of the story, which is failure and disillusionment. You see, when you are talking about disillusionment, it actually means that you had an illusion about something. You had, you lived in a world that really did not exist. And then there is disillusionment. You are moving away from that 
illusion that you had. That is a bubble which does not last for long. As you see, a bubble will not last for long. It will immediately disappear or it will burst and it will disappear. So there was an illusion in which we what's called loved to live in, but then it was completely shattered, which is disillusion. So how will you write the same thing you are going to you are going to talk about? That is failure and disillusionment. Failure and disillusionment is another important theme of the story B. Wordsworth uh, was society's solitary creative voice. You see, everybody was not interested in any kind of creation or any poem or purchasing poetry. They would better pay some money to the beggar and not buy a poem. On superficial level, being creative and intellectually curious alienated him from his neighbors because he was different from his society, from his people. They also uh, left him away. They also segregated him who were leading materialistic life. So the people, other people were leading materialistic life, but he wanted to live a life uh, amidst, uh, you know, the amidst nature, loving nature, taking care of nature or uh, trying to be a thinker or watcher. Okay, so he's a lover of nature, observed even the smallest marvels like the path of a pin in water and from these observations he distilled his lessons of life. He thought he was somewhat like William Wordsworth who was a romantic poet. But then this is his illusion, this is the illusion that you will talk about. Then you will say that this illusion did not last long, it did burst. How P. Wordsworth's character failed when he himself claimed that he wanted to be a greatest poet of the world. The greatest word of the world as he told to that child. But in reality, he could not be so. He tried to write the poems. You know, he, wa he wanted to distill lines every month, a single line he would write. But he would write the best poem. But that he was not successful at all. And the, uh, the and that B. Wordsworth tells this to the child near the end of his life. He realized that perhaps he would not be able to produce something as beautiful as that. And perhaps... Whatever he believed in was not reality, it was, it was just an illusion and uh, he failed to live up to his mark, he failed to live up to the society's mark and completely shattered. Even his house where he lived which was surrounded all around by trees cut off, cut away from the, uh, from the you know, materialistic world, from the concrete world that also was, uh, was you know, destroyed soon after his death. So that is all about this question that you are writing. When we move to the next question, question number two, you see how does the poet introduce melancholy and disturbance in the poem, the Dover Beach? What does he say about faith in this context? So question number two is from Dover Beach. From this question, you see the important points are what? First one is melancholy okay, and disturbance. That means sadness and some kind of worry that is disturbing you. And then how, what, what is he talking about faith? Generally, the loss of faith. Here, I have already discussed the poem Rover Me. So if you read that thoroughly, you will get an overall idea how to frame this answer. First, you see, if you have to talk about melancholy and disturbance, you have to write about the sorrow. Why, why is the poet sorry? The, the poet was, you know, poet had complete faith in God. But then he became a doubter or skeptic. Why? Because at that time, after the theory of Darwin, which said that you know, there was evolution and human beings just changed into human beings from apes, uh, and, and there was no role played by God, the religious people who trusted that God created us, there was a loss of faith in God, isn't it? Those people who would run to God at every necessity, or, or for anything like a father figure, they started doubting whether there is truly a God or no. And, and did, did he even bother about human beings creation or no? So this doubt made all these, all these religious, uh, no, religious people become heavily helpless and doubt there was a loss of faith in the society during the Victorian period. So there was melancholy, it was just like that grating road he is talking about, that pulling back of pebbles in the shore and then again flinging them on the land and that constant friction of it and that, and that melancholy sound, that sad sound, constant melancholy sound that he hears. That also reminds him of slowly how once upon a time, faith, you know, faith, faith was like a belt around the earth, just like the seas. But now what has happened, slowly it is retreating and what is what it is leaving behind is the pebbles, naked shingles, remember? That reminds us that there is nothing but distrust or, or, um, or just confusion, lack of faith in others. 
So that is what remains. That is the symbol of, uh, which is ex uh, which is explained through the word pebbles, naked shingles. Okay. So that's all about uh, melancholy and disturbance. He says it is just a confusion where people do not know what to do, where to go for help, whether to trust in God or no. They're just fighting with one another for their own materialistic desires. That's all for melancholy and disturbance. Now faith. Loss of faith, you have already said that uh, a discordant note is seen from the fourth line where the contrast is seen to the timeless sea. On the French coast, the light gleams and is gone. That means once upon a time, every line is symbolic over here. It is not just that the French coast was, uh, you know, it was lit with lights uh, because it was uh, not that late night. But then again, when the time passed, it was late night and slowly all the lights were switched on, off. This is also a symbolic, the significance is also here. It shows that once upon a time, faith was there and now we have lost faith completely. The light in our eyes are gone. Next, suggesting the flickering of faith in God and religion, the poet then looks back at his own coast and the famous white cliffs which are eroding. Even that white cliff that is made up out of chalk, okay, so that is also eroding fast. And that erosion makes him feel about the loss of faith in human beings. Obviously, talk about Darwin's theory over here, the reason for the loss of faith. So that is just a four mark answer. So I, I feel that you have a complete idea how to write uh, this answer, although they are divided into two parts, you will write it as a whole only. Because this is all about this disturbance, this melancholy is because of loss of faith. So the answer will come together, not divided into parts. You will divide it into introductory paragraph, uh, content and then conclusion, but not separate the two questions. Okay, because that way you cannot divide. Faith is the reason for the melancholy. So you will write, divide it according to one long answer for a four mark question. Alright, I hope till this much is uh, very much clear to you and if you have any doubts, you can write to me in the comment section. Thank you so much. Hope to meet you in the next video.